Okay, today we're going to look at the first lesson in Chapter 5, and it's entitled Rate of Change and Slope. So you're going to need some things before we get started. You may want to take out uh, some graph paper, a ruler, and of course you'll need a pencil and eraser. So your job today is to watch this video and to take Cornell notes. So the first thing you need to do is set up your paper so that it has the Cornell note format. Remember that in the upper left hand corner you should write the lesson. The title of the lesson is Rate of Change and Slope. And then in the box below you're going to write the essential question. And the essential question for today is based on the learning target which is the following. Find the rates of change from tables and find the slope. You may want to pause the video at this time and get that all set up and then resume when you're ready to go. Alright, you've got your Cornell notes set up and the essential question written. The next thing you should write is the definition of slope. And according to your book, slope is the vertical change over the horizontal change. Or, another way to say it is rise over run. And the letter that's used to indicate slope is the letter M. Not sure why that is. Slope doesn't begin with M. And I don't know of any word that begins with M that represents slope or the rise over the run. So we'll just go with it. It's got to be a reason some time long, long ago, but I don't know what that reason is. If you can find a reason, come tell me and inform me. You'd be the first one in 20 years of teaching. Okay, so here's what it is. If you look at the graph of a line, you can find the slope by, by finding the vertical change over the horizontal change or finding the rise over the run. So if you look at the first example, example A, this line has a slope and you find it by finding the rise over the run. Two points on the line have already been chosen for you. You just have to count the rise and then count the run. Now a couple things to notice. When you are rising and going up, that indicates a positive rise. And when you're rising but you're going down, that indicates a negative rise. Even though it sounds funny to say a negative rise, rise usually means up. And when you're running, running to the right indicates a positive run, and running to the left indicates a negative run. So to find the slope of the first line, you go up. One, two spaces, that's up, that's positive. And to find the run, you go over. One, two, three spaces, that's to the right, that's positive, that's two-thirds or that's 3, so the slope ends up being 2 over 3. Pretty straightforward. If you look at the next example, example B, very similar. Two points have already been identified for you. You can find the rise over the run or you can find the slope, so you just have to count from the first point to the second point. How do you get there? First you rise and you go down 1, 2, 3, four. And because you're going down, that's negative four. So the rise is negative four. And then you run and you count. You go over one, two, three, four, five. And because you're going to the right five units, that's positive five. So the slope is negative four over five. And that's slope. So in your notes, on your Cornell note paper, you can write down problem two. Notice that we skipped problem one. It's okay. You'll be okay. Write down problem two. Copy the graphs that you see here on this screen. And then find the slope of each line. You may want to push pause and finish these problems and then resume once you've finished. Okay, so in these two examples, 
just like the first example I showed you, two points have already been identified. You can find the slope of this line simply by finding the rise over the run. So you pick a starting point, here's the first one, here's the second one. To get from point one to point two, you have to rise one, two, and you're going up, so that makes it positive. Your rise is positive two. And then you have to run one, two, three, four, five. And because you're going to the right, that's positive five. So the slope of this line is up two and over five for a total of two over five, positive two over positive five. In the second example, same thing is true. Two points are already indicated or chosen for you. You're going to rise over run. You're going to start at point one and go to point two. And your run is to go down one, two places. And because you're going down, that's negative. So you rise negative two. Then you're going to run one, two, three, four, five, six. And because you're going to the right, that's positive six. So your slope ends up being negative two over six. All right, I hope that's clear. If that's not clear, make sure you put a mark in your notes. If this is not clear to you, you could put a question mark next to it so that you'd be sure to ask me about it when you come back to class. Now, if you look at any given line, it has a slope. And you can tell by looking at the slope of the line whether it's positive or negative. You don't have to calculate the slope to know whether or not this blue line has a positive slope or whether it has a negative slope. Here's how you tell. As you move across the line, so I'm going to draw this line and move it across so you can see what I'm doing. As I move across this blue line, and as I move from left to right, the direction the line moves will tell you whether the slope is positive or negative. So as I move from left to right along the blue line, it's going up, it's increasing, therefore it's a positive slope. The blue line has a positive slope. If you look at the red line, and as you move from left to right, you'll notice the red line is going down. And because it's decreasing or going down, it has a negative slope. The red line has a negative slope. So one more time, the slope of a line is determined by looking at the line and moving from left to right. As you move from left to right, if it goes up, it's positive. As you move from left to right, if the line goes down, it's negative. Now there are some cases where the slope neither goes down or up. These are special cases. So you may want to jot this in your notes. Just make a quick graph of each of these two lines. Where you place it on the coordinate grid is unimportant. Just notice that the red line is horizontal and the blue line is vertical. You may want to push the pause button and jot that down and then hit resume when you're ready to go. Okay, so if I look at this red line and I just pick two points, I could calculate the slope. And I can do that by finding the rise over the run. So if I start at point one, I'm going to rise to get to point two. Well, there is no rise. So to get from one to two, I rise zero. And then I run one, two, three, four, five. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four, five. So my slope would be zero over five. Well, anything divided or any number, zero, divided by any number is zero. So this is a zero slope. Zero slope. Now if I look at the blue line, I can do the same thing. I can pick a couple oops. I can pick a couple of points. That's not a very good point. And I can calculate the slope. And I can calculate the slope by finding the rise over the run. So I'm going to start at this point and go to this point. And I rise 
one, two, three. And then I run. Well, there is no run because I'm not moving horizontally anyway, so zero, run. Unfortunately, in math, any time you divide a number by zero, there's no definition for that. It's undefined. So this slope is an undefined slope, which we like to abbreviate as undi. Now, how do you remember that? Because oftentimes students will get the two mixed up. Some will call this red horizontal line undefined, and some will call this blue vertical line zero. Here's the easiest way to remember. When I think of slope, I think of a skier. So I'm a skier, and if I'm a skier on this slope, that's not very much fun. That's zero fun, sir. Zero fun, zero slope. If I'm a skier and I'm on this blue slope, that could be fun for a little while, but eventually that's not going to be so fun when you get to the bottom of this slope. Your body might be splat, undefined. So here it is again. Zero slope, zero fun. Undefined slope, your body is undefined. Hopefully that's clear. Now I could give you a, a couple of coordinates and ask you to find the slope. And one way to do it would be to graph the two points. So if I give you the point 2, 3 and the point negative 1, 2, you could take your graph, your coordinate grid, and graph 2, 3. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, here's the point 2, 3. And negative 1, negative 2, here's the point negative 2. And if you connect the two points, with a line like this. Now you can calculate the slope by finding the rise over the run. I'm going to rise up one, two, three, four, five. That's up or positive five. And I'm going to run one, two, three. That's three to the right, so that's positive three. The slope, therefore, is five thirds or five over three. So if you're given two points, you can find the slope by graphing it and then calculating it. There is, however, a formula for finding the slope of a line. And it is, as given, slope equals the rise over the run or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now that looks complicated, but take a second to write it down in your notes, write the formula, Hit the pause button so you can copy it down, and then hit resume when you're ready. So here's what this formula means. These little numbers next to the y and the x are called subscripts. y2 and y1 are subscripted variables. Subscripted variables just mean it represents the same coordinate, but in a different point. For example, if I were to label 1, 3 as point 1, and 4, 2 as point 2, then by using subscripted variables, I could say this is the x-coordinate, and this is the x-coordinate. How do I tell which x-coordinate is in which point? Well, if this is the x-coordinate of point 1, then I'm going to say this is x1. And if this is the x-coordinate of point 2, then I can call this x2. Same is true for the y-coordinates. This is the y-coordinate. This is the y-coordinate. But this is the y-coordinate of point 1, and this is the y-coordinate of point 2. So when you're given two points, it ends up being x1, y1, x2, y2. Now, I would suggest that when you do these problems, you label the points like I just did with an x1, y1, and an x2, y2. Now, you can find the slope of the line that passes through these two points by using the formula. And as you first get to, to know this formula, you might want to write it down every time so that you remember it. So I'm going to write it down. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
Now all I do is replace each of the letters y2, y1, x2, x1 with the coordinate that matches it. y2 is 2 minus y1 is 3 over x2 is 4 minus x1 is 1. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 and 4 minus 1 is 3. Therefore, the slope of the line that passes through 1, 3, and 4, 2 is negative 1 third. Pretty straightforward. So, here's a second coordinate. negative 1, negative 3, and 5, negative 3. And for some reason, my smart board is messing up, so I'm going to rewrite it over here. Take a second, hit the pause button, and calculate the slope for these two points, and then hit the resume when you're finished, and I'll show you the answer. Okay, so I'm going to start this problem by writing out the formula for finding the slope m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. One more time, I would suggest that you write it down every single time, at least in this lesson, until you have it memorized. Then I'm going to look at the two points. I'm going to call the first point negative 1, negative 3, so its coordinates are x1 and y1. And the second point is 5, negative 3, so I'm going to call it x2, y2. Trust me, taking the time to write this really, really helps. If you don't write it, it's so easy to get the x's and y's mixed up and the 1's and the 2's. So label each coordinate with x1, y1, x2, y2. Then it's simple. You take the 3, the negative 3, which is y2, and you subtract negative 3, which is y1. Here's another issue. Notice both of these are negative and you're subtracting them. Be really careful about how you write the negatives. x2 is 5 minus x1 is negative 1. What you should notice is when you subtract a negative, subtract a negative becomes adding a positive, adding a positive. You finish up the problem. Negative 3 plus positive 3 is 0. 5 plus 1 is 6. My slope is 0 over 6, which just equals 0. So to summarize it all up, you can find this in your book on page 295. A line that moves from left to right and goes up has a positive slope, and a line that moves down as you move from left to right has a negative slope. Lines that are horizontal have a slope of 0, and lines that are vertical have an undefined slope. Just remember the skier and what he does on each slope. So to finish up your notes, take the time now to go back through your notes, highlight and mark up your notes. If you have questions, put a question mark next to it, but in the margin, in this area, Make sure you go back and you write in a question. And then when you've finished writing your questions, at the very end of your notes, take the time to summarize everything that you've learned. Okay, well, if you need to, you can go back through and watch this one more time and add to your notes, or go back through it one more time just to listen to it and see if you can pick up anything that you may have missed the first time.